In this video, we're going to look at whether or not you still need to use Wishlist Member with Thrive Apprentice in order to protect your courses in any meaningful way. So we're gonna break this down into a couple of sections. First, integrations. Second, payment solutions. Third, what kind of content is protected and how it's protected. And fourth, both the student experience as well as you, the course creators, experience with the tools. So let's start off by looking at integrations. And I think integrations might be the most important one because integrations are something you really will have a much harder time uh, getting around or trying to make work. It's one of the main reasons people contact me to, to have me help them with their tech stack. It's because they've built this tech stack that needs integrations and there's not just a simple way to push a button and make sure that it works. Well, with Wishlist Member, you have a lot of integration options. I mean, let's just look at this screen right here. They integrate with all sorts of payment providers like everything from Samcart, Sendal, direct integration with Stripe, WooCommerce, uh, things I've never even heard of. On the email provider side, they directly integrate like one click integration with just about every major name out there. And then under these other services section, they integrate seamlessly with things like Presto Player, Pabli, Zapier, pretty much everything, right? So if you're looking for some sort of integration with a third party tool, uh, just being honest, Wishlist member is going to vastly outpace Thrive Apprentice. If we come into Thrive Apprentice now, and we look at the integrations that they have nat natively with just Thrive Apprentice, you can protect your courses, and you can do that with integrations with uh, Thrivecart, you can do it with WooCommerce, there's SendOwl, um, basic WordPress roles. There's a couple integrations there, um, but overall Thrive Apprentice as a platform does not have all of these native integrations. Thrive Apprentice is not going to integrate with any external email providers. Thrive Apprentice by itself is not going to integrate with any other payment providers except for Thrivecart, WooCommerce, uh, and SendOwl, and the SendOwl integration is not even worth talking about. And Thrive Apprentice itself is not going to integrate with external tools like Zapier and Pabli and Integromat and all of those others. So when you think about integrations, you have to decide whether or not you're one, going to use any external applications that you really need to integrate with your courses or your membership, or you need to decide how willing you are to kind of think outside the box and, and kind of work your way around a solution. If you want that direct integration uh, with a particular tool, uh, and it's not one of the native tools that Thrive Apprentice integrates with, you pretty much have no choice. You must use another tool. And in this case, we're talking about Wishlist Member, and that definitely checks the box. All right, now let's talk specifically about payment providers. Do you need Wishlist Member in order to integrate with payment providers? Well, we've kind of already touched on this. And I would say that if you're using something like Thrivecart or WooCommerce, you absolutely do not need Wishlist Member. However, if you are using something a little bit more complicated or really any of these other more obscure ones, you're going to need to use Wishlist Member right? Because that, that kind of integration is only going to be found by using a third-party tool. Now, if you are using Thrivecart, I would say absolutely just use Thrive Apprentice. Because in Thrive Apprentice, they have a fantastic direct integration with Thrivecart, right? This is one of the things that Thrive Apprentice has done right, and they've done it really, really well. Right inside of your Thrivecart account, you basically check a box and choose your course. And when someone purchases the product or the course, it automatically gives them access and it controls refunds and it controls removing access and revoking it and customers get added right in here to your customer section. It's just an overall really seamless experience to use something like Thrivecart. You can also build bundles directly inside of the Thrive Apprentice interface. Creating a bundle is simple, click add new bundle, check the courses that you want to belong to the bundle, give the bundle a name, hit save, and now this bundle is available inside of Thrivecart for you to build as a product. So if you're using a payment provider like Thrivecart, I would say the direct integration with Thrive Apprentice is the best you're going to get. If you're using WooCommerce, well, it integrates very well with Thrive Apprentice as well, but I would say pretty much on par with Wishlist Member. And if you're using some other obscure payment provider or you need some particular type of integration, you're going to want to stick with or go with Wishlist Member. All right, now let's talk about the kind of content that you want to protect and how you want to protect it. If all you're looking to do is protect courses and only the content inside of the courses themselves, then I would say go directly with Thrive Apprentice, and you don't even need Wishlist Member, unless of course you go back to the other integration ideas. If it's just courses and you're releasing a course and someone buys it and they get access to the course, then 
Thrive Apprentice is all you need and you don't need wishlist member. We don't need to add layers onto our tech stack because that slows down our website and that just makes things more complicated for us in the future. And it makes it harder to adapt and to change in the future if we've built ourselves into using a component of our tech stack that we just used because we used it and not because we needed it. Now, if you're protecting content outside of Thrive Apprentice, other pages on your website. For example, I have an asset library that's not built directly in Thrive Apprentice. It's actually just a page on my website. I use wishlist member to protect that page so only members of a certain membership level who've purchased a course or a membership can access this page. Now, I could build this page inside of Thrive Apprentice. I could make a course and just call it asset library and I could make all of those resources and I could give people who need the access to the whole library, the whole library, it sometimes makes a little bit more sense for entire pages not to be built inside of Thrive Apprentice. So if there are other pages on your website that you want to protect outside of the Thrive Apprentice ecosystem, you have to use another tool. You don't have an option there. So you will want to use wishlist member. Now, another method of protection is the drip or the scheduled content. If you're looking to drip content out to members at a particular interval, or you're looking to only let content come out on an exact date, uh, then you're going to need to use something like wishlist member and its dripping function. I will say right now, I am not a fan of how convoluted it is in wishlist member to drip content. I think it's really cumbersome. I don't think it's a clean solution. I don't think it's something that I really recommend. However, if you're going to do it right now, Thrive Apprentice does not by default have a robust content drip or content scheduling system. Now, it is my hope that sometime in the near future, you'll be able to come in here, find a lesson, choose to edit the details or choose to set up a schedule and be able to say, make this lesson available one week after the person gets access to the previous lesson or make this particular lesson available on a specific date. Those features, however, are not yet in Thrive Apprentice at the time of this recording. So if you are looking to do some robust stripping or content scheduling, you will need to rely on wishlist member. All right, now the last thing I wanna talk about, and to me, this is actually something that's pretty important, and that's the user experience for the students or those who are enrolling in your courses and for you, the course or content creator. So let's talk a little bit about that experience. Now, from the outside, the user should actually see zero difference between using Wishlist Member and Thrive Apprentice. Technically, the only thing that the user is exposed to from the front end is actually just the email that gets sent when a new member registers. Wishlist member can send that email or Thrive Apprentice can send that email. And the email technically can look 100% identical between both tools. So as long as you make them identical and you go in and you edit the emails like you should, the user should experience absolutely no difference whatsoever. Now, that is to say, as long as you're not trying to protect content outside of Thrive Apprentice, in which case, yes, right? Wishlist member can protect content outside of Thrive Apprentice. So to them, that would be an experience if they tried to access a page they didn't have access to, they would be shown an error page that you could customize uh, and set up through Wishlist member. Now, what I wanna focus on next is the user experience for you, the content creator, and what that is like between Wishlist member and Thrive Apprentice. Some of the biggest changes are how you manage your members. In Thrive Apprentice, you have this really nice customer section. And in here, you can add a customer and you can manually add them, put their name, their email, and just check what courses they get access to and then notify them by email. In Wishlist Member, you have to come in and you have to make membership levels and then you have to assign those membership levels to courses and then you have to create the user and you actually have to enter a password in for them. It can be randomly generated and then the system will send that to them and then you have to assign them to the levels it's just a little bit more cumbersome and I hate having to go into another tool. It's something that bothers me. I'm really trying to refine my tech stack so that I'm using as little as possible. Another thing that I really like about the interface is the bundle section. I mentioned this towards the beginning of the video uh, with payment providers. I really like the bundle system. Technically, the way to create bundles in Wishlist Member is to create a new membership level and then just go into your Thrive Apprentice courses and check what accesses that membership level gets access to, and then you've made a bundle in air quotes. But the actual bundled products can be made here inside of uh, Thrive Apprentice, and then they appear a little bit more meaningful inside of Thrivecart. So really it's it's just a user experience preference here. And, and I just like the way that Thrive Apprentice does it. So kind of to recap here, if in terms of the user experience, it boils down to working in one tool versus working in two tools. And I will always try and prefer working in one tool. However, 
if you have to protect content outside of Thrive Apprentice, if you have to integrate with something that Thrive Apprentice does not natively integrate with, then you're going to need to go with Wishlist Member. Pretty much in any other case, I would say go with just Thrive Apprentice. You won't need Wishlist Member at all, and you'll probably have a better user experience in the process. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you have any questions about using Wishlist Member or Thrive Apprentice, feel free to leave a comment or reach out to me at Confology.com.